Hi, Dr. Michael Clapper here, and it's the Ides of March in 2020, uh, March 15th, and I'm making this recording in the midst of a pandemic, a viral pandemic caused by the coronavirus, and I'd like to share some thoughts with you to help everybody get through these challenging times. Uh, this virus uh, is highly contagious, spreads easily from person to person, uh, but it's not terribly lethal, which is really important. Let's talk about that. Um, it spreads easily. People cough. The droplets with the virus hang in the air for about an hour. They eventually settle down, and on the surfaces, the viruses may last another couple hours, uh, and then they're gone. Uh, if you um, inhale the droplets or touch something and then touch your eye. Uh, how does it cause a problem? Uh, it rides, the virus rides in through the um, tiny blood vessels and the lymphatic channels into the connective tissues of the lung. And it causes an inflammation, uh, unlike the standard pneumonias where the bronchial tubes fill up with pus and mucus. That's not what happens here. Uh, the connective tissue of the lung where the lymphatics and the blood vessels are kind of plastered onto the fibrous scaffolding of the lung, that becomes inflamed. And the connective tissue scaffolding starts becoming edematous and stiff. And so the lungs lose their compliance and it gets hard to move those lungs in and out uh, and ventilate. And that's where the problem can come in. Most people never get to this state. Uh, most people, over 80%, they'll get a little sore throat, they'll run a fever, um, they get some body aches, they feel like they're getting the flu, uh, and they may cough. But that's the worst of it. You feel crummy, uh, with achy and flu-y feelings for a few days, five days, and seven days, and then it goes away. And if it behaves like uh, most other viral infections, people will form antibodies from that infection and they will be immune, which will be a key to ending this whole thing because as more and more people come through the infections uh, and survive, uh, they'll all have antibodies, hopefully, uh, and will be immune to it and the virus will have fewer and fewer human bodies uh, to invade and that will help end the infection as well as the warmer weather that's coming. Viruses don't like warm weather. And so most of us are going to get through this okay. This is not the Andromeda strain that coagulates your blood and kills everybody that it touches. Most people are going to get away with just a flu-like episode. Uh, so who is going to develop problems? Uh, of course, the people who have, say, lung disease, uh, where if you have emphysema or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma, your lungs are already stiff and damaged. The last thing you need is, them have, is have them become more stiff and inflamed. And for that reason, uh, folks with lung problems. If you've got congestive heart failure and your lungs were all engorged with blood to begin with, uh, them getting stiffer is not going to be in your favor. So the people with cardiovascular disease and heart failure are at higher risk from this. People with diabetes, if there's lots of sugar in your blood, that's going to uh, prevent your white blood cells from eating up the virus. And uh, then so diabetic folks are going to have a problem. And just people that are just very elderly and frail. Um, they, they don't have a lot of reserves. So they're at the highest risk. And, um, and so we really need to protect those folks. And so uh, they may need medical care. How do you know? Again, it comes down to the respiratory issues. Um, if you just have a fever and, uh, and body aches, a little cough, don't go to the emergency room. Don't go to your doctor's office. This too shall pass. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about uh, fluids and all that in a minute. Uh, but you do not need to be seen by a doctor. But if there's any sign of respiratory distress, if, you're, if it's getting hard for you to breathe in and out, you walk up a flight of stairs and are very winded. You are starting to wheeze and you don't have asthma. You, your lungs are getting stiffer and more inflamed. If you're feeling that's happening, still don't go to the emergency room. Uh, call your doctor's office and if possible, uh, get online and arrange a telemedicine conference, uh, consultation uh, with a doctor or a triage nurse who can screen you, who can see you on the, t on the screen. You can do it right off your cell phone. And, uh, and talk to the health provider, let them assess you, let them watch you breathe, let them hear you cough, uh, and, um, 
uh, they will uh, be able to assess, yes, you need to go to the hospital, or no, you don't need to, but check in with me later in the day or, or the next day. So that's the progression. Know that most people are going to do fine. Um, the folks who are running to, uh, who are at high risk, uh, we already mentioned, and those uh, who are starting to run into respiratory problems, call your doc and pr preferably uh, get a telemedicine conference. Get, just Google telemedicine. And, uh, and get a consultation, and uh, you'll know where to go from there. Um, now, um, some things that would help, um, basic viral strategies. One, um, the three S's, uh, get enough sleep. Uh, your immune system needs to be as strong as possible, and I know when I don't get enough sleep, I get sick. So, um, so especially if you're not going to work, you'll be able to sleep in. So. Uh, so get enough sleep. Um, don't eat sugar. I think sugar really suppresses your immune system's ability to fight this thing off. So don't be eating sugar as a food. Cakes and candies and cupcakes and donuts, that's eating sugar as a food. Don't do that. You can have some fruit, a little bit of maple syrup in your tea is okay if it's a flavoring, but don't be eating chunks of sugar as a food. Uh, stress is an issue. When you're under stress, your adrenal glands put out cortisol and that lowers your ability to fight off viruses. Uh, so uh, these are stressful times. I'm not minimizing it. But, uh, you know, raise your threshold about things that you get uptight about. If someone says something or does something that's a little offensive, you don't have to react and, and go back and forth and make a stressful situation worse. Yeah, let most stuff, it's small stuff, let it go under the bridge and, uh, and get out with uh, making yourself and people around you as, as stable and happy as possible. Um, the hand washing is real. Um, do wash your hands when you, if you shake hands with somebody or touch something that may be in, infectious. Um, and again, the, um, the common ways, you know, why is hand washing important? Because a common chain of infection, uh, it goes like this, a person will have the virus, they'll cough into their hands, they'll get the droplets on their hands, then they open a door and they turn the doorknob, uh, and now there's viruses on the doorknob. A minute or two later, somebody else comes in, grabs the same doorknob, they've got the virus on their hand, and then they uh, rub their eye or uh, uh, eat something or... Uh, uh, somehow uh, contact the mucous membrane in their nose or their uh, their eye, and the bacteria will ride in and on the blood and the lymphatics. And as it goes through the lungs, it sticks there and starts causing its mischief, and then it's coughed out. So that's the chain of events, and that's why you want to wash your hands and not touch your face, because that's how the virus rides into your uh, circulatory and lymphatic systems. Um, social distancing, uh, what a thing. Uh, but it's necessary right now because those viruses only travel about six feet and uh, we don't want a whole lot of uh, coughing and social interaction. But it's an unusual time. Uh, we can't let that be another complicating factor. No, this too shall pass. This is going to blow through two weeks, four weeks, six, eight weeks, ten weeks, whatever it's going to be. This too shall pass. This will end. And it's important not to tear up your personal situation or the social fabric around you uh, as we're passing through these difficult times. So, um, so get good with your cell phone. Get uh, um, know, learn how to use Skype and FaceTime so so your loved ones can see you. You can see them. Uh, keep that connection as strong as you can. Uh, nothing replaces a real live hug. Uh, but for these next few weeks or whatever, stay as connected and supportive as you can uh, with the people around you. Um, some things you can do for your body. Uh, drink enough fluids. Don't get dehydrated. Have oh, at least four or five 16 ounce glasses of water during the day. Keep yourself well hydrated. Eat lots of fresh vegetables, especially salads, lots of green and yellow vegetables. Keep that fresh stuff going. Fruits are okay. 
A uh, couple specific foods, mushrooms of various types seem to be able to uh, raise your immunity, as does the green seaweed called wakame, W-A-K-A-M-E. It's the green stuff in the, uh, in the salads at the Japanese restaurants. The wakame seems to boost your immune system a bit as well. So lots of fresh stuff. Keep your diet really clean. Stay away from the packaged and salty and sugary, junky stuff uh, as much as you possibly can. Uh, so, uh, I think we've covered the major basis here about how it spreads, who's at risk, uh, why you need to wash your hands, how to stay isolated, when to get medical care. Finally, uh, I have to say uh, something about the origin of this scourge that we're facing. Now, this was not a random event. Uh, this came from a common theme that you've heard me and others talk about. It has to do with the confinement and slaughter and eating of animals. Uh, we are plant-eating creatures, and we seem repeatedly seem to violate that, uh, that natural reality uh, with all the cows and pigs and chickens we eat. But in Asia, they have a long history, and I'm not blaming folks in, in Asia. I'm just relating the chronology here. They have a long history of eating anything that moves, and that may have come out from centuries of starvation, and, and I'm not condemning it. But what it's devolved into now are these dreadful wet markets in Asian countries, and these poor wild creatures, the bats and the scaly anteaters, the pangolins, and the ducks and the salamanders and the snakes and the fish are all kept in cages, fish are kept in tanks, of course, stacked on each other, and the bats on top defecate um, the pangolins down below, and uh, the pangolins get the virus, it mutates in their body, and they become intermediate hosts, and people eat the pangolins, these beautiful scaly anteater creatures. But people eat bats themselves, and uh, apparently uh, in China and Asian countries, uh, uh, people go into the caves and they pull the, these cave bats off the walls. Well, bats naturally are teeming with viruses. There's so much guano and close contact in those caves that it's a great uh, incubator for viruses. And so each one of these bats that they yank off the walls or snare in the air uh, are full of viruses. And so what must have happened uh, is because people like to, to put parts of bats, their, their heads and muscles and wings, into soups and stews. It's an ancient tradition there. Uh, well, uh, you can say with some precision that uh, going backwards in this epidemic, six months ago, eight months ago, in the wet market in Wuhan, China, some man or woman took a bat out of a cage, if it was still alive, or put a dead one uh, onto, a, onto a chopping block. Uh, and that man or woman uh, took a nice sharp cleaver and butchered the bat to sell it to somebody who wanted to put it in their stew. And when that cleaver came down uh, and split that bat uh, in, in half, well, it, split, it ruptured open its bladder and its, uh, and its intestines. And bat urine full of viruses and bat feces full of viruses sprayed all over that person uh, on their face, whatever, and they wiped it away and they inhaled the viruses and it got into their system and into their lungs and they developed that cough and they started coughing it out. And, and that was uh, patient zero. Uh, and we are all dealing with the uh, repercussions of that. And you know, we, we can trace that all the way back to that one fateful cleaver blow um, and that changed the course of human history. And this is a message from the animals, another message that we're the same ones we're getting from the from the because we in the West do the same thing. Remember the SARS virus? It was a pig virus that, that comes out of these confinement uh, operations where they put in, you know thousands of hogs or and cattle. They, these are all virus factories, virus incubators. Uh, when you confine animals like this. Uh, and we, we can't be shocked when these exotic uh, viruses uh, and infections erupt from these unnatural, inhumane uh, 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 installations to keep these animals together. And so the bats are telling us, the pangolins are telling us, the pigs are telling us, the cows are telling us, stop 
eating us. We're not your food. And if you confine us and eat us, you're violating natural law and it's going to come back on you. And that's really uh, what this coronavirus is, is really all about. And so all we have to do is go to our natural diet. The, the bats are telling us that we are not your food. You eat rice and beans and greens and fruits and vegetables. You'll be fine and healthy. We'll be fine and healthy. Uh, don't go into the bat caves and, and, and take the bats for food. They're not our food. Uh, let, let's eat a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet. And this will all go away. This will be the last uh, animal-based viral epidemic we'll ever have to face. And, and that's the real message here that's not being mentioned on, uh, uh, in the media here. But we need to talk the reality about the message behind this epidemic. And uh, it's another uh, uh, Western Union telegram from the, from the animals saying, let's live in peace. Uh, you homo sapiens, uh, go back to your plant-based diet and, uh, and you won't have to go through these uh, stressful times. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you and know that we'll get through this. This is a time to be more creative, get your sense of humor out, be supportive of people around you. Uh, there was a movie, Love in the Time of Cholera. Well, this is Love in the Time of Coronavirus, and that's exactly what's needed. So uh, let your love flow these, in these next few weeks and months. We're really going to need it. It'll test us all. But if we, if we love enough and, uh, uh, and want to help each other enough, uh, we'll come through this uh, in good shape. Uh, be well, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Dr. Michael Clapper here, and I want to thank you for visiting my channel and for watching this video. I've got a lot more content that I'm creating to answer health-related questions for you, my viewers. So please uh, subscribe to my channel down here. And if you found this video helpful, please like it and comment on it. Thanks for helping to spread the word about the power of whole food plant-based nutrition to heal both people and the planet.